Hey everybody, it's Alex Ruiz from Volander Forge and I'm finally going to talk about this thing. This mystery forge from Amazon. Now, you're going to have to bear with me. I don't have a microphone for proper video recording and I'm going to have to compete with traffic. So, bear with me. There might be fluctuations. There's a couple of things you'll notice that are different between the one on this little Amazon forge and what you're seeing right here. First, the one on Amazon comes with this booger green little baby blower. It's a little janky, but it does what it needs to do. Something I noticed is that it does put out a decent amount of air, but probably because this is designed to be a charcoal forge. Now, you can put anything in it, so I don't want to hear the whole ramble about, oh, you can put anything in it. Yeah, you can, but some things are better than others. I don't want to put coke in here. I don't want to put coal in here. Uh, but I did, it worked, uh, but it was a bit of a hassle, a little bit of fire tending. And since there's no clinker breaker on here, you're gonna have to like dig out the, the clinker from underneath and that's just gonna interrupt your, your flame and everything, your fire, and you're gonna have to change it up again. But that being said, it does work for charcoal. I did use a whole bunch of charcoal to get it running and forge with it, perfectly fine. But once I added coal, I needed a little bit more airflow and so I grabbed this blower, which I've had kicking around for about, man, four years maybe. I've been using it for other things. And so I said, you know what, let me just stick this on there and see if it works. And it does. I used it at the Alamo for a demo and it worked okay. I'm not going to say it worked well. I'm going to say it worked okay. It was enough for me to do stuff at the Alamo and even enough for me to do repairs while I was there. The uh, staff were bringing me tent stakes that were really, really out of whack. So... They figured we have a blacksmith here, might as well get him to fix stuff. And it worked, it was perfect. Gave me something to do while there was an audience. And uh, the thing that drives me nuts is the pass-throughs are really small and they're very high. They're about an inch from the lip and they're about three and a half inches from the actual core where the fire's gonna be. Now that's a problem because if you're sitting, if your, your fire's way down there and your work is kind of like way up on top, it's gonna take a while for it to heat up. And I did some knives, I did some little stuff, I made some tooling while I was there, trued up a pair of scissors I forged out. Um, so it does do the job, it doesn't do it that well. That may be my own ineptitude with this thing. I've only been using it maybe about a week or so, and it, maybe there's a rhythm, but I like things to be kind of plug and play. You just work them, you just, you're, you should set it up and it should go, you know. That's why when I designed my forge, uh, that's exactly what it does. And the big Franken forge behind the camera over there, which is portable, but not really. All in all, there's a, there's a lot of issues. Um, firstly, the pass-through. The tweeter did not like being used. Uh, did not like being used at all with coal. Uh, it kind of ate up in a way at certain spots here, which I know weren't there before. Um, so I probably should stop doing that. The bracket that holds the uh, blower to the Ford, the fire pot, it has a weld on there. I think on the, on the outside of the piece of steel between here, it's about, it's less than an eighth of an inch thick. I want to say like three sixteenths. I'm not good at math, so let's pretend that that was right. So it's less than an eighth of an inch and it's tack welded. So a very enthusiastic turn might break this off. Now, I, I, I was pretty ginger with it because I really was afraid of that breaking off. I'll, although the, the pipe that's connecting these two is real sturdy, I replaced it. it, it it's not gonna just fall out. It's pretty much locked in there. Although I like that additional support. The ash gate down here at the bottom, it has some gapping right where the hinges are and there's gapping right there at the angle of where it kind of closes back up on itself. So there's crap flying out at the bottom at any given time. And if you're not paying attention, you're gonna set things on fire. Luckily, where I was demoing, it was just sand and rock, so that wasn't an issue. Although it is a cause for concern, depending on what your setup is like. Um, now, the legs are very small. I've straightened them out because of the way I, I decided I was gonna mount this uh, piece to do demos with. I have these pipes that have uh, little feet welded onto it, so I just slide them up on there, and that's it, tripod. It's set at a height I, I like for, for forging. And um, it's probably meant to just sit on the floor. If you look at 
a lot of places that basically aren't the Western world, blacksmiths sit on the floor, their forges on the floor, their anvils are mounted to the ground. And this is made in India where I've seen a lot of videos of, of uh, Indian smiths. That's how it's set up. And that's most likely what it might have been meant for. And it works perfectly well on its little tripod. That doesn't really make a difference whatsoever. It's just, how are you gonna set it up? And I decided, you know what, I need a little tripod mount because I'm not sitting on the floor. Uh, not here at least, scorpions everywhere. Anyway, the uh, gapping is an issue right there. The little metal that goes from here to here, right there, you see my hands, right there. It, it actually goes a little further in than I think it should, and it's super thin, like we're talking something that's a sixteenth of an inch thick, and that thing will burn out. I didn't even use it because I was too worried about that, so I put an actual piece of pipe uh, between these two and it worked a lot better than I think the other one would. Um, also, the one that comes with it kind of goes in a little too far into the fire pot, the little area beneath the tweer, and the, the air is actually only coming out of one section, so you're having this hot spot on one area and not directly in the middle. And so I decided, you know, when I made this little adapter, it would cut back so the air flow would kind of be centered. And um, what I did find out is that it worked really well for heating up coffee. I took a, a, a like an old-fashioned coffee, co campfire coffee tin thing out there to the Alamo, and while I was there, I realized I hadn't even stopped for coffee myself. Decided to use the grounds that I had ready to go because I figured I might do campfire coffee while I was there, or at least the gentleman next to me uh, was doing outdoor cooking and that whole day so I said you know if we were gonna have coffee I'd bring the grinds and all that so I, I uh, put some ch charcoal up on the top kind of gave it a little buffer and set the tin on top and within maybe a minute and a half I had you know half a pot going pretty quickly and that was perfectly fine I actually want to do a little video on cooking with, with this little setup not for educational purposes just because it's fun and I love using older tools for cooking. I have a 18th century style brazier that I made a while back and a, uh, a smaller portable brazier for, of the same period right over there which I plan to use in conjunction with this as the uh, my mini cooking video. I like to cook. I didn't get this wig of my own. So that being said, if you have any questions, let me know. Final review, $200. It's I think I might have gotten my money's worth out of it just in the fun, uh, but if you're just starting out fun, you, you want more than just, oh, I'm having a little fun with this project. I'm looking for something with longevity. Who knows how it'll last if I, if I keep abusing it the way I have with coal in there. I'm probably going to just stick to charcoal and only use coal when I need to do demos um, and use it for helping get the fire going because it's just easy to drop some charcoal in there, some fat wood, and then a couple of couple of cranks with this and that, that piece is going. And I think that's probably what it's gonna find its use for, especially as we get into winter and we're gonna all have power outages here in South Texas. So that being said, I think I'm done here. I covered a lot. This is a long video. Sorry you had to listen to me ramble, but I hope that answers your questions. Generally, it'll do what it needs to do, but it's not the best at what it should be doing. It works for small things, and I think with a couple of modifications, I might actually come to really like using this thing. But for now, I need to make a grill to go on the top. I'm gonna cut that one over there and just put it on top and start cooking with it. Thank you very much, everyone, and I'll see y'all later.